everyone, this is Sai back again solo for part 2 of the unpopular K-pop opinion video. When I made part 1, I wrote an outline and I asked you guys if you wanted a part 2 because I had 3 more groups that I wanted to talk about that didn't fit into the first part of the video but I did not expect the amount of people that requested a part 2. So here we are again to do the second part. I think we all know at this point that a lot of the times K-pop comments can be a little bit of a toxic place and so I was really surprised just to see how positive and how reasonable all the comments were. Regardless of whether or not you agree with my opinions, everyone stated their responses in a very mature and respectful way and I think that's something amazing for the comments of anything related to K-pop. The fact that I could speak critically about even BTS and, and people could be so respectful in the comments, I was really really impressed. So thank you all so much for all your comments in part one and I hope you enjoy part two just as much. In this second part, I'm going to be talking about Momoland, Twice, and Red Velvet. Again, I want to put out the disclaimer that these are just my opinions. If you disagree with my opinions, then just feel free to write how you feel down in the comments below and we can have a conversation about it. So first, I want to talk about Momoland. I think everyone knows that with the new release of BAM, the song came out very, very similar to Boom Boom. That's not an unheard of thing to say. A lot of people are comparing the two songs and deciding which one they think is better, but some people are finding it difficult to choose one because they are very, very similar. Many people are saying that Momoland is going to be sort of a one hit, or I guess you could say a two hit wonder because the songs are so similar. And there's been a lot of cases in the past where other K-pop groups have also released very similar tracks back to back or within close proximity. Some examples would be BAP when they first came out and they released Warrior and then Power and everyone was saying how those songs were really similar. But that Warrior, their debut song in the original song, was a better song. The same with an older generation girl group called Secret. I don't even know if they're still together or not, but they released a song called Madonna and then followed up with a song called Magic. And the songs were very similar and as well the dances were very similar. So people called Magic kind of 2.0 of Madonna, but everyone agreed that Madonna was the stronger song. From the examples with these two groups, we can see a pattern. Companies usually come out with repetitive songs because they're trying to give the audience more of what they want and they think it's a safe choice. But if the second song fails to reach the height of the popularity of the first, then this backfires and makes people disinterested in the group and ruins the longevity of the height of their popularity. A lot of people think that the same thing is gonna happen to Momoland because they came out with repetitive songs and that's what we've seen in the past. But it's my unpopular opinion that Momoland still has a chance to be a high-ranking girl group because BAM was as strong a song as Boom Boom. When you listen to BAM and you think about Boom Boom, you can hear the similarities because they're very, very similar songs. But at the same time, BAM brought a new refreshing sound and a spin on the original that people can enjoy together or independently of the original track. They came out just as strong the second time as they did the first, even though it was repeating a very similar sound. This strong comeback shows that they have what it takes to make songs and videos that grab people's attention and doesn't let it go. Rather than a spike in popularity or the chance of being a one-hit wonder, I think that this maintenance of popularity, despite repetitive songs, shows that Momoland has what it takes to be a top-ranking girl group. My next unpopular opinion is about TWICE. Everyone knows TWICE as a super cutesy girl group. We all love TT. We pretty much all love everything they come out with. They're pretty consistently strong. Their performances are strong and their visuals are strong and the music's always good. I think every song that TWICE releases is pretty much a banger, aside from maybe Signal. My unpopular opinion about TWICE is that they went in the wrong direction with their concept. Now I think I phrased that wrong. It wasn't the wrong direction because obviously they're incredibly successful in the direction that they've chosen to go in. What I mean to say is that when they debuted with Like Ooh Ah, they're in a really unique position that I don't think they took the best advantage of that they could have. When they came out with Like Ooh Ah, it was a really unique concept because they were mixing concepts and that wasn't something that had really been seen at the time before. The theme of the video was very cool girl. They're post-apocalyptic, they're in a zombie wasteland, they're escaping from zombies, they're in very rough territory, but at the same time, they're still cool girls, they're still cute girls, they're still sexy girls. And that type of mix hadn't been seen before. They were playing it cool in a crisis, walking around the gym and not being phased by the zombies that are around them. The really popular girl groups at the time always executed one concept at a time. For example, if you think of 21 before they disbanded, they were doing very like 
badass girl kind of concept or with some of their other songs like cool girl concept but it was very strict to what they are trying to do and four minute as well they transitioned between concepts but with their later songs like hate and things like that they really stuck to the cool girl concept or i guess maybe what would later be known as the girl crush concept very kind of cool girl vibes a pink and g friend who were also around at the time stuck to the very cute girl concept very cute very innocent very school girl things like that and they executed that 100 percent when twice came out with that song although it wasn't necessarily something that people noted they were doing something really unique they were combining cute sweet girl concept with cool girl concept they were doing powerful girl crush dances at the same time as being cute and sweet and that was really cool and i think that's what caught a lot of people's attention with their first release after that with the rest of their songs they went straight cutesy girl concept and there's nothing wrong with a cutesy girl concept and they execute it so well but my unpopular opinion is that that slight niche that they had established for themselves with their first release could have been so cool if they chose to continue to execute it and it would have been something really unique and really special that since then we haven't really seen and i hope that maybe one of the upcoming girl groups that comes out can hit up that concept because it's something that i'd really like to see to transition into speaking about red velvet red velvet came out with whatever concept happiness was just a short unpopular opinion, I'm probably the only person in the world that really liked happiness. It gave me good vibes and I don't understand why it always gets so much hate. But I digress. Red Velvet's concept, which I didn't originally know but I found out later, was that they'd have the red songs, which are poppy, upbeat dance tracks, and then the velvet songs, which are more subdued, soulful R&B tracks. Now, I'm a pop person, I love pop music, and R&B isn't my favorite genre. So when they did songs like Be Natural and their other more R&B releases, I'd listen a few minutes in and then just kind of skip out because it's just not my favorite genre. But what I thought was really interesting is when they released Bad Boy. When I first listened to Bad Boy, I was getting strong R&B vibes from it, so I was already prejudging it to think that maybe it wouldn't be a track that I liked. But the longer I listened to it, I realized it was a mix of pop, dance, and R&B, and they incorporated those genres together in a really cool and interesting way. And now, Bad Boy is one of my favorite Red Velvet songs, and I know it's a lot of people's favorite song as well, because it had such a cool vibe that hasn't really been done that much in K-pop, especially by girl groups. But I know so many people love the red versus the velvet concept. So my unpopular opinion is that I wish rather than doing the split concepts, Red Velvet would forge their identity by being that mixed group that incorporates all the elements together and makes a new and unique sound. Now I know that SM doesn't write all their own songs, they do buy a lot of the material, so maybe having that new identity isn't something that's easy to find and would mean that they couldn't produce songs as frequently, but I think they have something really special on their hands and that would be something really interesting if they were to pursue that. Following the success of Bad Boy, it might be something that they might even do for the next album because I'm sure they must have realized how interested people were in it. Hopefully they don't see that as people having a bigger interest in the R&B side and pursuing that fully, but acknowledging that it's the mix that makes them so successful, especially with their vocal stylings. Again, they're really, really talented, but we all know that popularity of a group or member isn't always based on talent. A group could be a top tier girl group just because of their promotion or their company and not necessarily because of their talent. Of course, they're all talented. They wouldn't be a group necessarily if they weren't. So my next unpopular opinion about Red Velvet is that the member Silky is so underrated. Whenever there's ranking of the member's popularity, hers always ranks lowest or second lowest, and I really don't understand that. Of course, everyone knows that she's beautiful and she's talented, but I also think that Sulky is by far the hardest working member of Red Velvet. While of course they're all hard workers, there's been a lot of stages where it almost seems as though Red Velvet is on autopilot and they're not giving their all to each performance. Now, I'm not blaming them at all. When you do 10 million performances per day, there's only so much you can give to each one. But that's what really sets Solgi apart in my mind. She gives 10,000% for every show that she's in. For every stage that they stand on, she goes hard no matter what the other girls are doing. And I think because of this, she really, really stands out and I'm surprised she's not getting more acknowledgement. You can see stages where all of them are marking the moves, just, you know, going through the motions, and she performs like it's the last time she's ever going to be on stage. She performs like every performance counts, and that's so refreshing. You know she's as tired as all the other members. They've been through the same thing, but she has the mentality of putting 10,000% into everything she does, and it's really inspiring to see. My last unpopular opinion about Red Velvet is about Yeri. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like her when she joined the group because she didn't debut with happiness and she came later on. A lot of people say that she didn't deserve to join the group because she's not on par with the other members and that they were perfect without her. 
but my unpopular opinion is that she is the way she is because of that initial hate and not in spite of it. Yuri is the youngest member of the group. She was added late and she was added in the face of so much hate. She's not as strong a vocalist as the other members, but I think the reason that she hasn't grown that much and grown into her charisma and skill is because at that age, you really need people to amp up your confidence and all she really had was people dragging her down. People consistently telling you that you're no good. You can either choose to rise above or you can succumb to the criticism. And unfortunately, I think she was really beaten down by the criticism and that's why she is the way she is. Everyone shows her lacking skills in each performance as justification of their initial hatred saying, see, she's not that good. See, she's bad. See, she shouldn't have been added. But I think it's all of that attempt to justification that's keeping her from excelling and keeping her from growing. Because when you're the youngest member and you're new, you already have issues with confidence. You already have trouble finding your footing and with people not allowing you to find that footing, it could only be more difficult and in my opinion you can see that in her face and you can see the lack of confidence when she stands on stage with the other girls that are so confident and so powerful i think when she was added there was a reason she was added and she really stood a great chance of succeeding but because of all the hate she was never allowed to flourish in that way my final unpopular opinion is a more general one about k-pop as a whole there's the ongoing debate between fandoms of which group is going to be the next huge group, which girl group is going to be the next girl's generation, or who's going to be the next 21. But in my unpopular opinion, I think none of them are going to be the next anything because there's so much saturation in the market. When there were maybe five popular girl groups, having one that really stood out amongst the others allowed them to take their place as the queens of K-pop. No one could deny that Girls' Generation and 21 were the queens of K-pop at their time. They were by far the most popular groups. But now, I can't even count how many girl groups there are. And while there are frontrunners, it's impossible for one of them to take the forefront. And I know that oversaturation isn't an unpopular opinion. We can all see how many groups there are. So I believe that at this point, there can be no group that's the pinnacle of success or the number one top group. The rankings of success won't be a pyramid, but rather a trapezoid, where the top level is a plateau shared by many, many groups. And as more and more groups are added, that plateau will grow larger and larger, to the point where it'll be very difficult to tell who the front runners will even be. And it will just be a matter of personal opinion which group you like. And in a way, as an older school K-pop fan, that makes me a bit sad because it's almost fun to be cheering your favorite bias groups up and up the ladder and hoping that they can succeed and reach that top level of solitary success as a girl's generation or as a 21. Of course, something could change. The market could dwindle down. I have no idea. None of us really know what's going to happen in the future, but just following the trend as it has been going, that's the way I see it. And that pretty much wraps up my opinions for part two. Let me know what you think about that and everything else I've mentioned in this video. I really enjoyed reading all of your comments in the last video. I read every single one. So thank you so much for watching this series and make sure to subscribe to our channel in general. We post a lot of K-pop related content, including reaction videos, covers, we do a lot of English covers of K-pop songs, stuff like that. So make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss out on any of our stuff. But again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day. Goodbye!